Hey, what's up? It's Rich with the ESP8266 and Arduino based smart lock for MSE 101 and 102 at SFU. So you can see we've got the 3D printed case um, hanging out here. It's as complete as the prototype is going to get, and it's sitting on my door. And let's do a quick demo. So there are two ways to uh, actuate the lock we've got the button on the front, and we can also do that via the web interface. So right now um, the door is locked and the web interface agrees. So let's start off by hitting unlock on the website and you'll hear the motor spin and unlock the door. There we go. And you'll hear a beep once the website gets updated. There we go. So the, the beep tends to uh, lag the actual updating of the website. I saw it over at the corner of my eye. The, the site updated about a second before the lock beeped, which is fine. Um, so yeah, door is currently unlocked, and then we've got the timestamp there. Um, so let's now demonstrate the button on the front. Give that a push, and you'll hear the same stuff happen. Actually, let me prove it's definitely unlocked now. No camera tricks. So let's hit unlock. There we go. Now it's locked. And we'll, once we hear a beep, we can refresh the website. And there we go, the door is currently locked. Now let's go for a bit of a tour inside and see all the guts. So as you can see, we've got the case pulled off, exposing the circuit board, the motor and everything. So this case was 3D printed um, and it was definitely interesting having to work with uh, kind of designing for the tolerances for 3D printing and doing things like reducing the number of 90 degree overhangs in the design um, so that it would print well. So my, uh, I'll just give credit where credit is due here, my teammate Kirkland did the um, outside design. Uh, so everything you see when the thing's all tightened up. Um, I did the circuit board and the software as well as the um, encoder bracket, the um, encoder wheel, the adapter for the lock and the circuit board mounting stuff inside. So we'll just take a quick look at the circuit board. I have other videos on this, so if you're interested, check those out. Um, those are earlier versions before the, the final prototype is complete. But we've got power regulation stuff hanging out up here. This is just connected to a 12 volt wall adapter because um, the, the ESP running the AT firmware actually takes a ton of power. When it's transmitting, it takes like it's over 200 milliamps, and then the Arduino is like 30 or so just running. Um, so this, this definitely isn't a low power device as, well, in its current prototype state anyway. That could all be improved by um, messing with the ESP firmware, primarily uh, putting it in sleep mode and stuff when it's not really needed didn't have time to mess around with that kind of stuff. So right now it's plugged in the wall and that works fine. So next here we've got the Solar Botics Arduini. Um, so there's an App Mega 328 under that little red board. It's Arduino running the Arduino firmware. Really easy for prototyping with because it's so small that it still fits in a breadboard. Um, and then you just program it with the with your standard FTDI USB to serial adapter. And then we've got the L293 motor driver under there, that, that's for your motor control. And then we've got a um, block for the motor leads and a male to female connector for the um, encoder board. Next, we've got the encoder board itself at the bottom, uh, held by the yellow adapter that it made, and the ESP at the top. So the encoder board is, um, I'll put the part number, QRE1117, if I remember right. 
And that's just a simple uh, IR LED and photo transistor combo that's reading the little encoder disk, um, which is just about a quarter black and then the rest is white because my lock only needs to rotate 90 degrees to open or close. Um, and then the ESP is sitting there. Um, I'm not quite sure if it's an ESP problem or if it's a problem with the circuit board. I'm guessing it's the circuit board, but that thing likes to not connect a lot or it'll connect and then it'll just stop working. Um, it was working with the same software in a different form, like on a breadboard, not the proto board. So I'm guessing it's um, my cheap, uh, the cheap headers that my ESP is stuck into or the soldering is messed up and there's like a dry joint or something. So a lot of the times I need to flick the ESP a bunch of times uh, to get it to connect. And it, I guess just it settles in just the right position that everything's all electrically connected. So I think it's a mechanical issue or an electro mechanical issue like that and not a problem with the ESP, but I'm not totally sure. I haven't really had time to investigate it. Um, big black bit at the top is a buzzer and then this is our 3D printed button so you can see it's just got a little shaft and then a lip so it sticks into the hole in the faceplate that we 3D printed um, and then to be so that it's held we've just got a uh, hacked a, and super glued a piece of heat shrink tubing onto the top of the button there uh, just to hold the shaft to stop it from skating around um, because the faceplate is actually pretty thin. There's not much mechanical support. Um, so the button can uh, can pretty easily move around without uh, the tube there. Um, and that's about it for the circuit board. Yeah, it's just, it's all done on a proto board. Pretty simple really, there's not too much going on. Um, the ESP is just controlled by over serial from the Arduino, and then the web interface is pretty pretty much hacked together. It, it works and it's reasonably reliable. Um, the main, the, I mean, the only issues with this are communication problems uh, brought about by the ESP, and I, I think it's that mechanical problem that I mentioned before is really the only thing when stuff doesn't work. There's also this LED here which just, it blinks a couple times on startup. I don't really have it programmed to do much because it's super bright, right? Like you wouldn't want that on all the time and it sucks power. So yeah, that just kind of blinks when you start up a few times. Yeah, that's about it. Um, I'll do another section, uh, just kind of going into how the, the case is designed because uh, that's pretty interesting stuff. Um, once I pull it off the door, let's, let's take a closer look at the the case and how it mounts to the door and everything like that. So before we um, kind of open up the case, let's take a look at the faceplate because there are a fair number of interesting features here um, and design decisions that we made so that it would uh, all work out right. So first thing is the um, the lip around the uh, the edge of the faceplate um, so that it would kind of you know lock into the back of the case. I wish we'd made that bigger because we had to use some tape around the edges uh, to just thicken it up so that it would make full contact with the rest of the case and fit snugly. It did uh, stay on without the tape but it wasn't snug enough for like opening and closing a door and we didn't put any screws or anything in there. So we should have either done some kind of clip mechanism or just made it thicker to make it more snug. Um, so the hole for the button, nothing really of note except the lip on the button so that it, of course, doesn't go all the way through. And then we just hollowed out the middle by a couple millimeters. Actually saved us probably a dollar off the 3D printing just not having this material in the middle because we didn't need it. It's not structural or, structural or anything. Um, so we just got rid of it. So that was good. Pro tip for 3D printing, if you want to save some money, because often you're, you're charged something for the materials anyway, is just hollow things out uh, that don't need 
to be, you know, full thickness. And then the front um, was obviously kind of up the, like the side that faced the build plate when this was printed. So it got a little messed up, like because of uneven heating. There's, there's some discoloration here. A little bit of a messed up kind of thing there. I tried to sand some of it out. Didn't really work because I ended up exposing some of the infill and the, the infill layers are in a diagonal pattern so they don't match up when you sand like the first infill layer in, a, in one section off. You can kind of see that you can probably see that the lines are going kind of to the the grain is going like to the top left of the video on the outside and then right above the hole for the button the grains are going to the top right because that's breaking into the infill and they they crisscross so that it's stronger. The logo did print pretty well. Those aren't like those letters. The thickness is it's about a millimeter if I remember right. Um, let's, let's turn this around. So I printed out not too bad. It's a little bit of a mess up on the U, but overall not bad. And then the the holes for the LEDs. Those are just holes really. Um, so now let's go take a look at the lock on the door. The back plate's a little more interesting than the front. So here is the, I guess we call it the case or the back plate. Um, it's pretty big. It's, uh, well, the, the circuit board for reference is 18, or sorry, 180 millimeters. And we've got another, so yeah, it's over 20 centimeters long and maybe 15 wide. One of those dimensions is messed up, but I don't remember. Um, but it's it's pretty big. The uh, the guy who 3D printed it said it was the biggest thing he'd ever made. And because of that, there were a few, a couple little issues with it um, that, that weren't weren't a big deal, but it wasn't definitely wasn't an easy print. Um, so let's we'll just pull it off the wall or off the door. It's just held on by tape right now because um, <laughs> design problem. It hits. It's hard to see with the light. It hits the top of my lock. That was because. I didn't design the, the outside case, and then I was too dumb to check if it would actually fit on my door. So it hits that lip on the handle there. That was stupid. Just held it on by tape. Otherwise, it would be held on. Those slots uh, by the blue lock adapter fit those holes on my door. Uh, so it, it should be held on by those uh, if it weren't too big. It wouldn't be an engineering video without featuring a ridiculously messy desk. Um, so that's good. At least this is legit. Um, so I guess probably the best way to look at this is to kind of disassemble everything. So the, the circuit board is held in by a couple uh, standoffs printed into the case. One screw and then one little uh, clip. So I'll undo the screw and pull that out so you can kind of see what's happening got the screw and everything unplugged so let's see I should be able to pull the board out yep and just get hung up on stuff of course there we go it's actually so let's take a look at how the board is mounted so we've got one standoff there we've got one uh, that I'm using for the screw. I could use two, but didn't need it because everything was tight, so that's fine. And then in here, the most the most interesting part of the board mounting is the um, L-shaped cutout. So when you're when you're designing stuff, you got to make sure you pay attention to how it's going to be assembled. So the idea here was you'd kind of drop the board in and then slide it into that slot, which would um, stop it from sliding. Uh, up and down, and then the screw would kind of totally fasten it. Um, and then we've just got another standoff on what's the uh, the top right corner. Um, and then again here, a lot of cost saving going on. Um, big hole in the back of the lock because we didn't need it, so we didn't print it. Now let's pull off the uh, encoder and we'll take a look at that part works. So here's the encoder board. Um, it's a friction fit onto the motor mount, but it's a damn good one. So the, the board's really simple, just the, 
the phototransistor and LED, and then there's a resistor on there. Three leads, power, signal, and ground. So that's that. Um, so you'll be able to see how this mounts, but it's pretty kind of an over complex part. But I was just kind of testing out how well 3D printing worked because this is one of the, the first things I printed. Um, yeah, now let's take a look at the motor mount. So that's a that's a Solarbotics GM9, I think. Uh, sitting there. I'll pull that guy out. Also friction fit. Uh, probably should have used a screw because I ended up needing to put a whole bunch of tape around the motor. Because I remember, I guess the, the first time I printed it, stuff was tending to run small, so I expanded the mount. Uh, and then I think maybe I forgot to contract it when those issues got sorted out, so the motor is a little too small for the, the mount, but it's not a big deal. But if it were <laughs> designed correctly, it would fit. Um, so yeah, the mount's just a, a square wrap around for the motor, and then it's got a little lip here, just because the, the motor has some stuff, has a little, that little white shaft thing sticks out a bit, um, so you need to accommodate for that, and also accommodates for screw heads stops those from touching the motor when it's installed. And then, so yeah, slots for mounting it onto the door. Let's see if I can get a better look at that. Yeah, there's a better look at the board mount. You can see the, the printer obviously put some support here and then that was scraped away. Same for that, because that's a 90 degree overhang, because this was printed uh, from the side, just bottom up. So here is the uh, we're calling it the lock coupler and the encoder wheel. Um, so those are both 3D printed as well. The encoder wheel fits on the back of the motor, um, which has a short little D-shaped shaft. Pretty simple. And then we've got the, the paper sticker uh, that the encoder reads off. The lock adapter is a 4 millimeter square shaft which is what my lock uses. And then the back is uh, the motor shaft. Um, and you can, if you're using the solar robotics motors, you can actually, you can find SolidWorks models of them, which is awesome. And the dimensional drawings are also there on the website. So that was pretty easy uh, to produce. So that's, that's about it for the 3D printed parts. I'll just maybe do a bit of a flyover kind of thing here and take a peek at some of the features a little closer. So you can see that the case printed pretty well. Um, it cracked in a couple places apparently. I guess that was while it was printing because the the guy who printed it for us super glued there. You can kind of see it there. Super glued. Just painted some super glue over those cracks. Not a big deal. Cause that's that's kind of what you get when you're you're printing something so large on just a a hobby 3D printer um, that that isn't enclosed and temp controlled and all that kind of thing. Pretty solid prototype. It works quite well. Um, and then I'll probably have a, another video of us at the demo day. Yeah. But if you've got any questions about smart locks, Arduino. 3D printing, uh, designing for 3D printing. I'll probably be doing a few more videos on that because it's pretty interesting. Um, leave me a question in the comments. I'd be happy to answer. Love working on cool projects and answering random questions and stuff. It's a good time. But that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, also, shoot me a follow on Twitter at Rich Richard A for more frequent updates on all the crazy stuff I'm doing. Um, thanks for watching and have a good one.